we're going to do a quick video, a bit of wind coming in, big westerly storm, front's about to hit, so hopefully not too windy. How to know what's the best shoe for you. I recommend mountain bike shoes. I race Div 1 road with mountain bike shoes, no worries. I've never ever been dropped because I've got super stiff, you can't even bend these shoes, super, super stiff mountain bike shoes. I recommend mountain bike shoes, you can self-defense, you can fight, you can run, you can climb fruit trees, it's just safer. Tsunami's coming, ditch your bike and run. You know, it's just great. These these bonds, I think these are fake. I got them from the local bond dealer. The quality is pretty poor. They've disintegrated very quickly, but the sole's still great. And it's all about the sole. It's all about your sole. So it's super stiff still. It's peeled off. It looks monkey, but it's it's a fantastic shoe. I love these shoes because. Uh, Imagine rocking up in those to the cafe. Oh yeah, the people around the raffle jerseys, etc. And they're not all raffle wearers, the pretentious toss pots, but most are. Um, they just they crack them, especially when they get dropped by me on my uh, my bike. And in here is a secret weapon, this is a soul star in a soul, which I do highly rate. You can't, they're hard to pull out, so I won't pull it out, but it's a soul star in a soul, and I do rate those. Got my cleat slammed right back for better power transfer, sent ball on the foot. That's just so you don't get toe overlap. That's no logic there at all. That's just basically, let's keep the noob safe by not hitting their front wheel on their toe. You know, like, how old are you? Not, not so, not how old are you, but how experienced are you? Because there's plenty of 80 year old cyclists out there who are very experienced more than a 20 year old new, which is fine. Everyone's a new at some point. But mid foot, I definitely rate. It's better. Just try it and see what you think. And you have to lower your seat. You'll be more aero. Anyway, how big should you use your shoes? Small or big? A lot of bike shops say small, small, small. Get a little Japanese Camino foot. You know, get that bunion foot. Get that those nerve compressions going on. Get the, get the hot foot when you're riding along. You're like, oh, this sucks. Get those shoes if you want. I always recommend a bigger is better approach, all right? Bigger is better. Not too big, but at least a thumb. From the tip of your toe to the end, you want to have a thumb, all right? And that's, that goes for marathon shoes, cycling shoes, you want to have a thumb width, all right? I worked in the foot industry for many years selling shoes, and all my customers came back and they were happy. Some people did come back, they bought the small shoe, the shoe that fits, and they're like, oh, I, actually, was, I did a marathon and lost all my toenails and my socks are poking through. And I'm like, I told you. And like, yeah, yeah. Sometimes people have to learn the hard way. I get it. I get it. But always, if you want comfort and performance, you know, comfort plus efficiency is performance. Thanks, Steve Hall. And have that thumb there, all right? And have some width as well. You don't want your feet, the foot's meant to splay, right? Embrace the space, outro. All right, so you want to have that splay. So you're going to, when you're pushing the watch, you want to have a, you're going to spread. If your foot's like that, you, this is all cramping up. Your plantar fascia's coming up, your Achilles, your, your, your gastro, your calves, your quads. Width, girth matters, all right? Girth matters. And uh, so these shoes are thrashed, you know, but they're still going, man. They're still going. So always have the thumb at the end and you'll just thank me later. Thank me that. I've got to get a bit of heel slip. Heel slip doesn't matter too much. You're doing 3,000 watts. You know what I mean? Comfort is priority because when you have the brain's really weird like that and good like that, in that if you have something that's like, you see people with their jerseys like that, <laughs> Instagram, they, they can't breathe. Like, I don't want to ride around about my, my jersey like, like that so I can breathe. My friends might think I'm weird. I might get unfollowed on Instagram. So they, people, cyclists like that, and they've got their helmets super tight. And they've got no gloves when they hit the ground, they just they just embrace the tarmac with their palms. Gloves aren't cool, tarmac skids are better. You know, and so we cycling such a fashion, fashionist, a wanky, pretentious sport. And I love cycling, I love people on bikes. I just want to encourage comfort, all right? Because if it's comfortable in your life, you're going to come back. You're going to want to come back. Comfortable sex, you're going to want to come back. Comfortable run, you're going to come back. Comfortable work environment, comfort, comfort, comfort. And then the more comfortable you are, the more you can step out of your comfort zone for when it matters. You know, push it harder, watching the heel, holding the wheel, things like that. You know, so they have discomfort when it matters, when it benefits you and other people, but have comfort when it comes to fashion. And you'll just, you'll fly, you'll be a lot better. You're more comfortable. I don't wear bib nicks. You know, uh, cut, that cutting into all your, your arteries and veins over here and your muscles, pulling them down. Oh, man. How no about way. the ones that are like fabric right over your stomach? Yeah, There's you not even a cutout. The diaphragm can't even pop out. I wear just shorts. I don't, I don't go the bib. The bib for me, the bib was designed back in the day when the nicks were made out of wool. And so they get wet in a bike race or sweat or whatever and then they start to fall down. <laughs> right? So they have to have some sort of retainer over the shoulder. And then Lycra came into the spandex and that. And for whatever reason, maybe it's all the 
the fat team owners or whatever who want to wear team trade nicks, they can't wear shorts because their gut will just like flop out. So it's like a mini corset. Right? Now, I, I, I accept that there's some men and women out there, some mammals who got a little bit of extra pushing for the cushion, cushion for the cushion, and they want a bit of a corset. And that's fine. If the bibs are comfortable for you, keep rocking them. But if you're like me and you love that high VO2 max feel where you just feel liberated and free, then get rid of that shoulder strap bib. You know, I've got some bibs at home. I've just cut it off, put it on the, in the grease rag pile and just wear them as shorts and it's fine. And I do riding across Australia on those, 24 hour races in those, and yeah, you know, I just I love it, all right? Bit of chamois cream, so we're good to go. And uh, I don't wear a bra under my jersey, <laughs> because... Just, just right there. <laughs> I know, but it's just so much more comfortable, especially yeah. when you're pushing. Yeah, when you're pushing your, your PR watts, there's little things that irritate you, just they, they can take the marginal gains away. For sure. I find, I find it cramps up my breathing. Oh, I feel about the breathing. And yeah, people have their yeah. mouth closed. Uh, they, they want to get fit and they've got a closed mouth. It's like, you ain't ever going to get your goals. It takes three kilos of oxygen burn, one kilo of fat. So no bra or a lightweight one if you need, if you, got, you know, yeah. the boulder holder yeah. requirements. But just lighter is better. And just, just freedom, you know, having a bit of, bit of looseness. Even the kookaburras are green. You see a kookaburra wearing bib mix? It's wearing shorts. That's the guy from the billabong that's it. But, uh, or flew the shoulder. The kookaburra flew over the cookie's nest. But that is the real deal. Have space in your shoes, embrace the space. Don't be afraid for the Instagram pretentious people to go, oh no, look at your shoes. Look at your shoes. Like when I'm dropping them up the climb, I'm like, see ya. You guys train 20 hours a week, I'm doing five. <laughs> see ya. You know? So that's just the reality there. And a bit of banter, I love it. I love to stir the pot. I just wanna get people thinking, you know? Like, when I first got into road cycling, I was all about the fashion, and I had, had small shoes, and I'm like, man, these suck. And I'm like, this is how it is. And I'm like, okay. And then one day I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my running shoes the same width as my cycling shoes. And I'm like, holy heck, I can actually ride further, I can ride faster, stronger, and longer, and I have a better positive experience. So it means I want to come back. And at age 42, I'll be here forever when it comes to cycling. A lot of people come and go. The fashionistas will always come and go. The people in it for the long haul, comfort is king and queen. Cheers.